button and uh, all right. Well, welcome to our meeting, our, uh, our local weekly um, uh, talk on, uh, you know, how we can help you become more and more successful. So uh, today what we're, um, what we're going to talk about is uh, on gating. We have Nick, we have Nate McAllister here. Um, Thank you. And we're going to um, talk about how you can ungate yourself, or uh, what I would prefer is for you to have Nate or somebody else, um, you know, do it for you because it, it is a lot of work. Um, we did some, and, and Nate did some, and I had some other services uh, do some of my ungating. I have two different accounts, uh, so we had uh, plenty of time to try everybody out and. Uh, you know, Nate really did the best job. He, he has a lot of services that, that he provides that uh, just isn't available from anyone else. Um, you know, definitely on gating, you can use any service you want, but, um, you know, someone who is there to help the community uh, is definitely who I want to give my money back to. And, uh, you know, Nate helps a lot of people with a lot of things. Um, you know, on gating is just one of the services he does. And he's willing to help you, you know, if you want to give him your money to do it or not. Um, I would recommend you use Nate or, you know, or find someone else you're happy with. Um, and, you know, you have to do a lot of things that you're not going to do in your normal um, Amazon business. You really don't need flat files. You don't need spreadsheets. And you don't need to... Um, create or modify the images that uh, Amazon's going to ask for and you don't have to spend you know dozens of hours of time to get ungated in all those categories. Um, I've really never used uh, flat files and you know I sold about 40,000 items in the last year and not once did I have a need um, for making the pictures or flat files or any kind of spreadsheets uh, that they required for getting ungated. So um, you know can't you find a better way to spend your time than doing that? Uh, you know, he'll explain to you everything you need to do, and uh, I think he's even made some reports on uh, how you can get ungated in some categories on your own, uh, if that's what you want to do. But um, I, I would suggest that you don't. Uh, you know, take that time and, and build your business or find some more product to sell. Uh, that, that's what we have done. Uh, that's what Amazon's done is taken all the hard work out of uh, your business. So all you have to do now is go out and source. That, that's all we do. We source and we use scan power and we get the stuff there as fast as we can. That's how we can send thousands of items every week is because we dedicate all our time to sourcing and just scanning that item, slapping a, bar, a barcode on it, and getting it in a box and getting it to Amazon as fast as you can. Um, you know, don't worry about the small stuff. Worry about what's important, uh, and that's getting the stuff there and being able to sell in those categories. Um, you know, so if you have more time than money, then look into doing some categories yourself. Um, but if you don't, then um, find somebody to help you get ungated. Um, and uh, so Nate, why don't you tell us about uh, some of the things you do and what you can do to help um, all the members here uh, to do it themselves if maybe they want to do it. Okay, yeah, cool. Thanks for the, uh, you can hear me all right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the uh, kind words and the introduction. That's, that's really nice of you. I, like I said, everybody knows that I do this. My service is dungateyouraccount.com. And I give 25% off to this group. Sean's a friend of mine, and, and uh, I want to help the group out. And um, a couple of the people in here, actually, I think Nick, Nick Deuce is a current customer, and a couple other, was that Bill Barnes? I've worked with some of you already, and uh, everybody knows. I mean, it's not a secret that you can get yourself ungated, but like Sean said, it's about opportunity cost, right? It's about what you can be doing with that time instead of doing the flat file. And, and, and and uh, if you can be making money sourcing, then you can source, uh, you know, even just $30 an hour, let's say you can profit $30 an hour, and then you spend, you know, if, you, if it takes you five hours to get engaged in clothing and shoes, you know, you, you got to wait, you, at, at that cost, you would spend 150 bucks to do them both, that would have been 
you know, a better option, but everybody's opportunity cost is different. Some people, you know, I don't know how much you got to decide what your time is worth per hour. And, and if your time is better spent doing it yourself, then I recommend doing it yourself. Um, but I don't really want to push the service too much, but if anybody has any basic questions about ungating, feel free to PM me. I'm in, uh, I'm in the groceries, uh, group. I'm in a couple of, uh, Sean's other groups. Uh, just, you can reach out to me and I can answer any real quick questions you might have. Um, we get a lot of questions about grocery and health and beauty. Um, we don't do that right now. Um, we, we can't, we can, we can make some exceptions and help people if they're willing to go out and, uh, you know, it requires people to make purchases, right? So I don't really like to, uh, there's not that much we can do for them. We had a couple of ways that we were doing it where we actually were able to buy items online and get those invoices accepted, but it's not working every time. So I don't really like to sell a service that's not guaranteed. And, and with our ungatings, you will get ungated if you use my service or you get your money back. I mean, we've only, we've done over 400 clients so far. And I think we've had maybe two that didn't get ungated. Um, and that was for, you know, a slew of different reasons that could have been avoided. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, another, uh, is it okay if I go into to the listing studio? That's kind of my thing right now. I, yeah. 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 Like you said, uh, you know, you don't need to, I, I say that everybody should, if they get the chance, learn how to make a flat file. Eventually learn how to, you know, if you're selling, if you're in this business for more than a year, you should, you know, get a good idea of everything. You don't need to be able to do a good flat file to be a great Amazon seller. Um, but the service that me and Brandon Ortega uh, have started is basically, we create listings, we make them dense with keywords, uh, bullet points with a, uh, features and, and uh, benefits. And we, we really make these products as uh, presentable as possible. And we've had really pretty amazing success with a couple of items that were just uh, dollar store items that are now selling like crazy. Um, they're things that other people are not going to find um, for a couple of reasons. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. And, and, and we think that there's a lot of potential in that. Um, it's still a little bit, uh, you know, everything, whenever you start a business, right, you got to find your pricing and find what your time's worth. So at the beginning, we're just, we're just launching it. We, we've been working on it for a while. Um, we had somebody contacted us, had some orders. We did them. He was super pumped. Um, so we decided just to launch. Uh, we know what we're doing, but the pricing is, is still up in the air. We have our prices now. Um, we did a discount uh, for, the ACE members, and, and I would like to talk to you, Sean, about a discount as well. I don't think we talked about that. Right. But we can talk about that. Um, but, yeah, there's a whole there's a whole uh, world of, of Amazon that a lot of people don't see, right? Like, when we sell online, we're accountants, we're marketers, we're, you know, salespeople. You need to, if you're creating your own listings, you can really, really set yourself apart on certain items. Some things are only, you know, they're going to be limited just by the nature of what they are. But the key to creating a good listing is differentiation. So what we do when we create a listing is we actually will analyze the market and we'll decide what they're targeting their product as. So if, if you're selling, uh, if you're selling, uh, I don't know what's an example, some sort of supplement. And everyone's marketing it as theirs are all affordable or theirs are all uh, some allergy free or we are going to try to find the one that we could target that's not totally saturated and differentiate yourself from a crowded market. Um, and then you can actually sometimes even charge more, um, even on a, even on a worse product. <laughs> I mean, it's about sometimes, you know, making, it's about how you present it. There's a lot of great products on Amazon that don't sell because they look like crap. And there's a lot of crappy products that do sell because they look like, you know, you put lipstick on a pig. Um, but, you know, that's what we're doing. And, and we've also got a course coming out that's really going to – I know there's a lot of people that – our service – I'll tell you right now that our service is, is too expensive to just have us put up listings for you randomly for products that you might not be the only seller on. You know, you're not going to go get something at Walmart that's not listed and bring it to us and want a listing because you won't be the only seller on it for very long. Um, 
you know, we'll do it, but we, we recommend, we turn people away for certain things like that. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> lost my, lost my train of thought, but, but, um, you know, with, with the, with the listings, it's, there's a lot that goes into it and it's a whole, it's a whole area that, that is just kind of overlooked and there's a lot of money to be made, especially if you can make your own listings and, and Brandon Ortega, he's, he's in here now. He's a, he's a big flat file guy and that's how I met him. He does on gatings as well. Um, he, uh, he helps me with creating the, uh, the flat files and, and if you can get a product that you're the only seller on for, for a certain amount of time, you know, I mean, you can make some good money on it. So, you know, just something to think about. Um, like I said, my service is, is too expensive for a lot of different uh, situations. I think anybody could afford my service on the sense that it will make the money back if it's the right product. Um, and I don't, I spend thousands of dollars a month on my own business, but that's because I know those things have huge returns. So I, I love it when I can find something to spend money on that's going to make me money. Um, you know, making my money work for me. And that's how we feel with this listing studio. We're excited about it. It's going pretty well so far. Um, and we'll talk about a discount, Sean, for the group. Right. We'll do, we'll do some promo launches and stuff. And there's, I, I, I would love, there's a couple of people that have, prom have sent me items that I would like to, uh, to do just because I, I'm interested in them. I think that the results could be killer. Um, and I might, I might let, you know, if, if somebody's got a product that they're really interested in, they maybe can't afford it right now, PM me. And, and, and I might be interested in doing it in exchange for uh, social proof. Um, we're still working on the social proof aspect of it. Um, we want to, we want some people that are willing to let us share. Um, Cause we've done, we've done listings, but we can't really share them because nobody wants their product that we just made for them public. Um, and also we sign, well, we can sign a non-disclosure agreement if anybody's worried about that. If you're, if you're a private label person, somebody asked me the other day, they're like, well, what do you do? You know, how do I know you're not going to take my product? And I was like, well, I'm going to take your product. <laughs> no. Um, they told them we'd sign an NDA if they wanted us to, um, which, you know, I mean, my business isn't taking people's items. It's helping them make it and, but if somebody's got something that they think might be a, a winning item or maybe it's a private label item, I, I'd be interested to, to have, you know, PM me and maybe I'll, maybe we'll use it as social proof. You'd have to let me show it to other people. That's the only, that's the only stipulation. I'll make it, but you have to let me promote it. Right. So Nate, what you're, what you're saying is when you, when you guys help uh, somebody list a product through the listing studio, you're not, are you saying here on the call that you're not going to take that, that product or whatever it is and, and try and source it yourself or, or oh, yeah. uh, make money on it. Right. People can feel safe and secure that you guys are just going to help them do the listing and max right. help, help take them to the next level. Right. Right. And anybody that's worked with us one-on-one, -on -one, um, I mean, w there are certain things that if, if another person came selling this item, we've had a couple of, of, of situations where it would be like, okay, if somebody else is selling that item, then that's us because there's no one, there's no way that anyone else would know about this item. Um, I don't want to get into like further more about like how, how that's happening, but you know, we've got special bundles and stuff that are created that if, if basically if somebody else sells that same, that same thing, it's either counterfeit or it's me and it's not going to be me. So, um, and like I said, if people, you know, people shouldn't, don't trust anybody, but, um, we sign an NDA for you if you want. And then if I take your product, you can sue me and take all of my money, which isn't a lot. Could, could I take all your money? Is that okay? Yeah. You can pay my credit card bills. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, I mean, I've been working with you guys on one of my private listing products. It's coming out hopefully in a couple of weeks. So we're excited mm -hmm. about that. And uh, you guys have done a great job so far on the listing. We're, we're really happy. You know, the response is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it's basically like working directly with, <clears throat> with, a, with an expert um, uh, that knows exactly what, you know, what they're doing. And, um, and you saved us a hell of a lot of time in keyword research and, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Oh, we might've lost Sean. Um, but yeah, uh, 
a lot, of, there, a lot of suggestions that you guys came back with were really great stuff that we wouldn't have thought of. Uh -huh. and, um, and then the other thing I really liked about the process is that there was a, <clears throat> there was back and forth, right? So we were able to kind of ask questions. Well, why this keyword, you know, cause right. it didn't seem immediately apparent why that fit in there. And then Brandon would just shoot us a note back saying, okay, well, here's how we figured it out. And this is why we want to try it. And you know, that right. kind of a really, really valuable service. And, and to be honest with you, if you're going to launch a product, um, I, I don't know. Can I say the price or is it different now than it was a couple weeks ago? Well, your price, your, you, you probably charged me more, right? You, you uh, paid 20, you paid $20,000 for one item, right? And it was worth it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I think I paid like, uh, okay, whatever. Um, you, can what, you can tell them, you can tell them how many people are in here. So I paid $150 for help with the listing, right? And that included pretty much everything. And, um, I mean, if you're going to bring a product to market, you, you want the list to be right, you know, you want it to be accurate and, and um, 150 bucks is nothing. You know, if, if you're having a hard time spending $150 on consulting um, for, for the kind of service that, this is just my personal opinion, not the, the opinions that I'm expressing right now don't reflect on Sean or anybody else, but you know, if you're going to bring a product to market, you know, you know, 150 bucks here, or, you know, whatever, right? You can't be sweating two, three hundred dollars for product uh, package design and all that other stuff. If you are, it's not. It's you shouldn't be bringing a, a private label product to market. Um, and so, 150 bucks to to really consult, even to consult with other people to give you an opinion about what your listing looks like is well worth the money. You know. So anyway. One of the thing, one of the things that we like to do also um, is with our li uh, listing gradings. We don't want, you know, you don't have to use us forever. If you, if we do share what we know when we do a listing, and if we do a listing grading for you, we really, really, in deep detail, go into what we think should be changed and why. Um, the Amazon A nine algorithm has got there's so many little things about it, and there's a lot of things that people don't even know. Um, that I don't even know. It's kind of like Google, um, Google's Penguin algorithm where it just, it changes in flux so much you don't really know what's going on. But there are a lot of things that we do know that a lot of other sellers don't know, not because they're, they just don't. I mean, it's not something that most people know. It's something that we spent time learning um, because that's, you know, in this business, because, you know, I'm in, I'm, I do a lot of services. And for me to be in services, I've got to come up with something that's going to make other people money. Because um, if I'm not making other people money, I'm out of business. So the way for me to do that is to find ways, you know, you got to think, can I help people find more product? Like there's already a lot of sourcing groups. That's not for me. I tried it. I don't, I don't like that. Uh, it's great for a lot of other people, but for me, it's just, it, the product quality was, I didn't like it. Um, or you can help people sell more. Um, and that's what I want to do. And, and, and we can help people sell more by creating killer listings. Um, and you know, some, we can't, we can't make, you know, you can't give us a piece of crap and then we can do some shadows and, you know, I mean, we, we can make a compliant listing for a piece of crap if you want. You give us an expiration date on it and everything. But, uh, you know, we, we can make uh, just with a few little things that, you know, people, people think, okay, well, I can do my own listing in 30 minutes or, you know, that 15 minutes. Like, hey, you can, but you need to see it. This is what I'm, this is what we're doing. You know, people pay newspaper there's people that write headlines and they get paid a lot of money to write a headline but that's because the bottom line is affected they end up making a lot of money by just a couple of words can make the huge difference between selling you know 10,000 magazines or selling 50,000 and sometimes it's just one or two words or the order of the words and that's kind of how Amazon uh, listings are there's a couple of little things that people don't uh, do that we see you know we we can't there's we, we don't do a magic trick on it i mean if if it's not a good product and it's not a good market and there's people are only going to be buying 10 of them anyway what we guarantee is that we will drive as much traffic as is possible to that product so if you're going to sell that product we'll get you as much traffic as you could possibly get for that item we can't make people buy it but if they're going to buy something similar we can make them want yours as much as your product can be made you know to, to be desirable so so that's what we do and, and and you know we're we're looking for more social proof and that's hard because um 
you know, we, you go by word of mouth, right. And we hope that people have good experiences and they share that. But for us, uh, you know, I can't take, uh, people, I would love to take some items and be like, look, this is what we did. This is where he bought it. The margin on this is stupid. No one's going to find it for ever. Um, you know, and, uh, but we can't do that right now. So, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get to that point where people can start to see that it's not spending $150. It's investing it to, to make more money long term, especially if you're going deep on a product. I mean, how many are you trying to sell? You got to ask yourself. Um, cause if you're planning on selling it for over a year, I mean, well, you know, 50 cents a day by a better listing. Like, yeah, I can pretty much, uh, promise you that, but also we don't take on listings that we don't think will be able to help you recoup your money. Um, yeah, Nate, just to be clear, um, this product, not for release. Oh yeah. <laughs> don't no, no, uh, no, no, uh, social proof on my product that you guys are helping me with. Not yet. Anyway. Well, it's okay. I'm going to be selling it myself. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I didn't sign an agreement. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so Nate, let's, uh, would you mind if we took some questions from the, from the, uh, I have some questions. Yeah, that'd be great. Cause I'm just like rambling on and on. Um, back to the topic at hand. Uh, what can you do, um, you know, as a seller, um, to get started to try and get yourself ungated? Um, you know, what are some steps that people can do? Um, if they want to try it on their own, you know, see, how easy or hard it is, right? You know, before they might want to pay somebody to do it for them, right? Yeah, I mean, if you got a long weekend or you're not sourcing for some reason, you're out of money. Um, by all means, go ahead and give it a try on your own. But the what the way I would start, you know, you got to get in the big ones, um, the the ones that have you know recently been gated, the the beauty and uh, personal wellness, and you've got your grocery items. Those. Those are huge, and I think that those are the most important. Um, after that, I recommend go. And with those, you know, go. Uh, it's, it's. I don't want to tell. Like I said, my service doesn't offer that. I did write an ebook on how to do those three, but since I wrote it, they've actually upped like the requirements. So the quantities that are in the book are actually a little low. I've been told. So if if you do read my book, I recommend you buy more than it says. But basically, when I got ungated in that, I, I think I went to Walmart and just bought uh, 10, uh, for grocery, I bought like 10 beefaroni things, and, and I ended up, I already took up like 30 of three different flavors, and I went up to a self-checkout like an idiot and, and scanned them and paid for one, and then scanned the rest, paid for one, and, and I sent them in Amazon. That, I got approved that way. Um, I think they're getting more strict with it. But those are the three that I recommend you get started on. I mean, if it's hard, it's hard. You got to do it either way. I, if you want to make money in this business, don't go out and buy a scanner. Don't go out and buy, you know, you don't want, you don't need a warehouse yet. You need to get, it's so much more efficient to be approved in as many categories as you can. The example I was telling somebody the other day was, you know, if you've ever been to Target and you're not ungated in anything, and you've left. And, and I talk to people like, man, I went to four or five targets today. I'm like, well, that's crazy. And you spent a lot of time that you wasted because you weren't able to check any of the gated stuff. So you actually spent 30, you know, 45 minutes at target where you could have spent a lot of the day there. If you would have been able to go into the, the beauty and the, the grocery and stuff. Um, so the efficiency is much better. And then some people, their argument is, well, I don't have enough money anyway. So like that's an even better reason to, to get ungated because now you can have more of a pool of products so you can get better margins. If you have better margins, you can get more for the little amount of money that you do have. So either way, you should be getting ungated, whether you do it yourself, you do it with somebody with me or one of the 40,000 other services there are now. Everybody gets you ungated, guys. I don't do a super turbo level of ungating. I mean, we give you the best service we can and, and we guarantee it. And you'll get a good price with us through this group. But get on gated however you got to do it. Whether you use me, do it yourself. Um, please don't PM me about how to get on gated in beauty. I wrote that book because I get asked that like every single day. Um, and I don't have a great answer for it. But uh, check, check out the book. Nate, Nate, since you're not doing grocery, would you mind if I gave him a couple of quick tips? 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please. Yeah, because I've I've uh, gotten a few people on Gated and Grocery recently, and um, there's there's a couple things, guys, that and and hopefully this will be helpful, and I'll try and keep it uh, short and sweet for you. Um, let's let's get some uh, some people just you know in chat. Go ahead and type why if if um, you understand that a receipt is an invoice. Do you guys understand that? When you go to your local grocery store and they hand you uh, a regular receipt, that the receipt is actually an invoice. Okay, I'm looking at chat. Nobody's typing why. If you don't, if you don't understand that, type N for no. Okay. Um, what you what that means is, since the receipt is the invoice, okay, you can you can open up your Word document and you can go online and you can download an invoice template. Okay, and every single thing that you need to fill out an invoice is on that receipt. Okay. The address of the store you bought stuff, quantity, pricing, everything. Okay. And, um, and so one of the ways that, uh, I got one of my accounts, um, approved for grocery back before I, I, I didn't even know who Sean was. I didn't know that there were Facebook groups on uh, about FBA. I didn't know anything, but I knew that I wanted to probably sell grocery. And so, um, I went out and I bought, I think I bought like 10 pop tarts, the big pop tart boxes from target. And then I bought, um, I went to Walmart and I bought 10 of, uh, something else. And then I went to, and this was all the same day. And then I went to Walgreens and I bought, uh, like 20 of something else that I could actually make a profit on. But, but please note like the, the first two, the first two items that I bought, uh, from target and, and Walmart, cause it wasn't smart enough. And I, I didn't really care about making a profit because the purpose of buying that stuff was to get ungated. Um, so I just kind of went to something that was inexpensive and I bought it and I bought, you know, a pretty decent quantity of it and I took it home and I got those receipts out and I downloaded three different invoice templates and I just, you know, copied all the information that was on the receipts to the, uh, to the invoice template. Okay. And, and then I sent those in and it was crazy. I got approved in less than a day for grocery. And I see almost, almost every time that I get a question about ungating or I see somebody post about it in a group is how do you get invoices from, you know, when you're buying your stuff from Walmart or how do you get invoices? And Nate, I mean, do you, do you concur with that or do you think I'm, I'm nuts or? I think that's awesome. I, I honestly, well, this is my, how do they know that that's not, uh, people aren't just fudging the numbers? Well, but here's couldn't, you, couldn't you go and just use an old receipt and then just change the date and the quantities and then keep the, you know what I'm saying? I'm just playing devil's advocate. That's actually really awesome. And I might start offering it as a service if that's seriously true. Okay, you can hook me up with like five, 10% um, from that. Uh, no. but, but here's the thing. Um, Amazon, it, we never did anything where we were lying. We actually had the product and we actually had the receipt, right? So that if Amazon, I'm not saying that Amazon would ever do this, right? But on, on the receipt that you get, there's a, there's a number, right? There's a record number for that receipt, okay? And so you put that record number where the invoice number should go on the template. And so if somebody ever went back and audited our account to figure out if we ever actually really did purchase that amount, right? They wouldn't, I don't think they would ever do that. But if somebody ever did, then they'd be able to verify those purchases, right? right. The other thing that you can do too, um, which I saw... Uh, which I got another account on Gated with and I kind of was getting lazy and I didn't want to mess with uh, creating the invoices is I just scanned um, the, you know, three receipts from three different stores at three different times. And then at the top of each receipt, I just put all the information that they wanted, you know, our name, our address, you know, our seller account and the, the ASIN number. Right. And it was really, really simple to do that. Um, and so you just kind of, and, th and then we actually, we got declined, right? They asked us for more information. And so then I had to respond and I scanned it and I made it bigger. <laughs> I made the address bigger at the top of the receipt, right? And I put an arrow, actually, I, I put an arrow that pointed to the, the information that they were asking for that we had already submitted in our original document, right? A big red box around it with an arrow pointing to it. And about two hours later, we got approved. So don't, you know, like if you don't get approved, it's okay. Who cares? You don't get approved. You just keep submitting the information, right? It's kind of how you, how you get approved. And right. if you guys are not approved in grocery, you need to be approved in grocery. Like today, right now, yeah. go out, buy some Pop-Tarts. Okay. Do if, it right now. 
all this stuff still works. You know, it doesn't matter how long ago people said they did it. Um, you know, I physically took a friend to Walmart uh, this last week, and I bought, you know, we bought five items. We bought five packs of chapstick. We bought five packs of Walmart brand um, Q-tips, and we bought five um, of some other beauty product, and they checked out with, you know, three separate transactions, and they were approved in beauty within 24 hours. Um, and I, you know, I told them what to go buy uh, for grocery and, you know, the health and personal care. And they were approved in all of those last week, buying five items and doing nothing but scanning Walmart receipts all day to the same day. And they right. all at the same time. They scanned them all on one scanner, separated them into, um, you know, separate files. And, um, you know, they were approved. If you don't get approved, it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It just means that your rapid Amazon is um, bored or, you know, likes to mess with you or maybe, you know, texting his girlfriend. You know, it's a lot easier to hit the no button than to maybe hit three or four buttons to approve you. So when they send you that form letter to be um, for more information, just give them whatever they want or you know, let the case close and you open a new case. Every time you respond to that case, you're talking to somebody new. Um, so when they ask for more information, you just do whatever they tell you to do and the next person will probably approve you. you know? Yeah, and I think it's important to note, like, you know, really, because we're talking to a lot of different people at a lot of different skill levels here. Sean, uh, and I want to reiterate what I said too, and uh, Nate, you know, you as well, right? We're not saying that you make stuff up, right? You agree with that, right, Sean? We, we, you go oh, out. Not. I mean, we're not. You go out, you buy the product. Up. Yeah, you, you go out, you buy the product, and you use those receipts to submit to be ungated. And this stuff is not rocket science. It's exactly what Sean said. Like, you, you guys have to remember when you're in all these other groups, you know, and people are saying, oh, I didn't get ungated and whatever category they were trying to get ungated with okay well yeah you know like i could have gotten into a facebook group and said oh i didn't get ungated in grocery the very first time i or the fifth time i you know submitted right but if you give them the information like sean was saying that they're asking for eventually you're going to get ungated okay and then of course we're here to support you guys too if if you're on your fifth try or something like that you know get in touch with us with us through the group and maybe we can give you some pointers or we could at least point you in the right direction to a guy like Nate who could definitely get you squared away, right? Because if you're, if you're wasting all that time trying to submit and resubmit and resubmit and resubmit, I mean, you're not getting approved, then you definitely need to just pay the money to a guy like Nate, have him do it for you, it's done, and then you get on with selling the stuff that's in that category. Is that, is that helpful to anybody? Can I see some whys in the chat if that was helpful or... If it's just a waste of time on, on these soapboxes. I can tell you, I have two accounts. You know, everybody knows I have, I have two accounts. And it took me six tries to get approved in groceries. I didn't go out and buy more stuff. You know, they told me that the very last time I was denied, they told me my scans were not clear enough. And <laughs> I explained to them, you know, that the scanner I used and the, you know, high, how high the resolution was. And that was my whole response to their request for more information um, was exactly how I scanned it, you know, what resolution it was scanned, and the information on the physical file I sent them. Um, and I did not answer any of their questions, but explained to them why my scan was clear enough. And I was approved. You know, I, I didn't answer their questions, you know, um, so, you know, it's all about the rep that you're dealing with. You know, he didn't feel like approving me. So he denied me. So I responded. And the next rep, because you always talk to somebody else, they approved me because uh, they seen that all the information I had sent them was already correct. So, yeah. you know, it has a lot to do with what you're dealing with. You know, the people you're dealing with might not understand your language, or they might, you know. It depends on, on when uh, what you're sending in is getting responded to. 
um, you know, the time of day, you know, if they're at the beginning or the end of their shift, you know, you have to deal with all these personalities. So whatever they ask you to do, you do. You go out and buy enough to prove that you have a quantity that shows you're reselling it. If you're buying one or two of something, you're not proving that it's for resale. If you buy 10 of them, you know, obviously you're going to be using it for resale. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, are buying a hundred pallets of something. So you sending in two or three is not a big deal to Amazon. You know, one of the worst things that I could say, what I recommend is, is like we used, we used to work with Amazon directly. We used to get limited permissions and work one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, we don't do that anymore. It got too sloppy. We couldn't get people to remove us and it was just a mess. So, but uh, it used to get frustrating, right? We'd have, we'd have eight or so different conversations going a day with Amazon and different uh, reps. And uh, sometimes they'd say stuff that I just knew wasn't right, not because I'm a genius, but because I do them all day. And they would just be little things where they would, they would tell me to fix something that the other rep had just told me to fix into that way. And what the mistake I used to make was I would, I would get mad and I would respond like, you know, something smart, like, you know, if you, if you have a, if you have a smart answer, just hold it because all they're going to do is send you another response. <laughs> that's going to take that much time just to make you do it again. You're not going to get out of doing it. You're going to yeah, do it anyway. I've, I've done that too, man. Yeah. You get really frustrated about some stupid question. Like where's yeah, the yeah. number and it's right there in bold, you know, on the piece of paper and, yeah. Just do whatever they ask you to do, and if they if they don't like it, they'll ask you to do something else. And you just do whatever they tell you to to do. You get a rep who uh, who approves you, you know, uh, and that's all there is to it. And if you hire somebody else to do it, they're going to do the same thing. You know, you're still going to have to deal with them. Um, just go out and buy some stuff. Don't worry about how much money you make. If you make a profit, you know, don't even bother scanning it. Buy some $1 items that you can find at Walmart or anywhere else. I use Dollar Tree items to get, to get approved. You know, I use Walmart, um, grocery stores. Go out and don't even bother scanning the stuff. You know, buy it, get yourself approved, and throw it in the garbage can. You know, is it worth $20 to be approved in groceries? I mean, are you going to ever make $20 in groceries? I mean, I've, I've made $20 in groceries since the beginning of this call. I'm sure at least, you know, so spend your, you can, you can just buy stuff. You're going to, you know, you can go grocery shopping and right. just get to just check out twice and, and take a bunch of stuff. You're going to buy anyway, something you might buy more than, you know, eight, nine, 10 of, and then just do those on a separate receipt. I mean, you can do it very efficiently, but don't, don't overthink it. Like Sean, like Sean said, just get it done. No one's ever been suspended because they tried to get approved too many times. As long as you don't do anything wrong, like you will get, you'll get approved eventually. Amazon doesn't want to mess with you. They want to make you earn it, but don't be afraid to do it. I mean, lots, a lot of people have asked me, they're like, well, Amazon wants my response. And they said, I got 24 hours. I'm like, yeah, you do. But I mean, then you also have five days and then you have, you know, and then you can open up the case at any other time. So a lot of people stress out about things that, you know, just if you want to do it, it's, it's still, it still takes the time, but don't stress out about Amazon suspend, you know, getting in trouble because you didn't get it done quick enough or you tried too many times, or if you failed once, you'll never be able to do it again. You'll be able to do it again. Just, just, you know, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. We were, we were working, we were working hard to get approved in uh, shoes and clothing and we were pulling uh, the images actually from Amazon listings that Amazon yeah. Amazon. Yeah, don't, that's you like know, the worst, the worst place to get them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, so my Amazon is actually on these listings, right? So they're definitely approved images and we were sending the, the images in and we kept getting rejected over and over and over again, you know, and finally um, I had to go to another website, grab an image, make sure it was cut, uh, you know, like edges weren't cut off and whatnot. And uh, I think it was like six or seven times we submitted for that. We, we got approved and, um, okay, so Nate, there's a couple questions in the in the chat. Um, they want to. Uh, there's a few people that want uh, want to know if you can talk specifically about getting ungated in auto and uh, BISS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big holdup for them is probably the store URL, which is really um, 
it, it, it used to be you could use your storefront URL. That might still be working. You can try that. Uh, That's uh, what I did. Um, my team right now does some. Yeah, it, it worked for me back when I did it. But uh, my team does something differently now. Um, basically, we make a, we make a URL with with the products listed on it, um, and then we share that URL. So it doesn't actually have to be like a store. Um, you know, for some reason, it was it was kind of dumb that they would accept your storefront. Where obviously you have a storefront because you're on on there. So it's just kind of, and, and you obviously aren't selling any auto products already. So I don't know what they're looking at. Um, but it, what we do is, is we take, we take it to a, a Google drive. We get the items, you know, you still gotta have good images and they have to be items that could actually sell. They can't be like Honda parts or something that's, uh, you know, not allowed to be sold. And, and, and then other than that, they usually are pretty, pretty reasonable with it. So if you know how to take a, make a document and then make it a URL, then you should be able to do it on your own. And it's the same with BISS. I think BISS, it used to be, when I started, we were charging like $400 for BISS because we might have even charged more than that because I didn't want to do it because they, back then they were requiring 50, uh, a 50 line flat file. Um, it was, it was stupid. And, and it wasn't even that great of a, I mean, I was like, okay, I wanted to sell BISS, but not that badly. I was like, okay, I'll, come, I'll come back to it some other time. Um, but then they, they did away with that and well, they might still do it to some people. I, I haven't seen it. Um, but you can do the same thing with the, uh, with the storefront as I, as you do with the auto, like I just said, you can make a, I recommend if you haven't tried and, and what I said kind of sounds confusing about creating the document with the images and, you know, you go on Google drive, create a Google doc, paste, paste the image that's got the, the you know, the, the acceptable backgrounds, no big shadows, no text. It doesn't, they don't actually hold those images up to the same quality as of uh, standard as they do with clothing and shoes. They're not going to look for the hashtag FFFF background. They're going to basically just look and see if it's an auto part that's going to be able to be sold without any, flagrant you know problems but if you if you if that doesn't make sense then at least if you don't want to pay me to do it at least go and try and do your use your a store which you does everybody know how to find that i i don't want to explain out loud because i don't know exactly this <laughs> there's if you if you're on if you're on amazon and on one of your products there's a better way to find it but if you're on one of your products you can go and see where your store is listed and just click on that and, and basically copy that link and it'll, it'll uh, be your storefront, right? You can just go to um, amazon.com slash shops, S-H-O-P-S right. slash whatever you've named your store name. Right. So, you know, if it's, you know, Nate McAllister is what you typed in the settings, then it's shop slash Nate McAllister. And make sure that, you know, just type it in, make sure that's it, and then cut and paste it in there. Um, yeah. You know, when I signed up on my second account for BISS and uh, auto parts, um, you know, only about a month ago, uh, they didn't ask me for any information. And, it, you know, it's a very small account. We don't do much on it. Um, you know, we filled in the forms and we were approved. You know, we were never asked for pictures or anything else, even for the BISS. So, you know, if you're selling in those categories, uh, you know, you want to sell in those categories, Go ahead and, and try and apply first. You know, um, I, I think it might have to do with something about your metrics. So um, yeah. do that, and if you get denied or they ask for more information, um, you know, then get the information or, or hire somebody to do it. But you should at least uh, give it a try to try and get approved in these categories. Right. Yeah. I mean, if if, if you've already decided that you don't want to pay then you need to, you should definitely try it. It's just, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. I mean, you'll save time. You'll be able to find more product. You'll be able to find better product. I mean, there's really no downside to it. And also I recommend it now, because as we've seen with 25 and up DVDs, things, the gates close. I mean, just because you're, uh, you know, you haven't gotten approved in, in clothing now, the thing about clothing now is I can get you approved and you can get yourself approved too. But it might get to the point where they're like, all right, I mean, this is being, this is, you know, I don't know, but they could be like, you know, send us in some samples, you know, or, or, uh, you know, you, you might need more, you, maybe they'll start doing Google image searches of your item and they want to make sure that you're actually taking your own picture. 
some you know i don't know but it could make it more difficult like 25 and up dvds that's not that's not a cakewalk to get into anymore or um, you could just close that category jewelry was right. for a very long time and you could not apply for it you know just recently they opened that up so you could apply to get uh get back in fashion jewelry but right, yeah. for a long time you couldn't you couldn't do it and if they have enough people selling in shoes or clothing they'll um they'll do that too you know they right. don't want anything oversaturated oh yeah i mean get get in while the doors are open i don't i mean i'm not trying to start a panic and i obviously it's my business so i want everybody to get engaged but i don't want you to feel like you know just for me some people you know are, are feeling like well you know i i don't want to get engaged and i'm like my my one thing just to consider is you want to do it sooner than later just because of that but you know that that's not that's a that could be a long shot but better safe than sorry um what was were there any other questions? Oh, Frozen. Somebody's probably going to, people probably wonder about Frozen. Um, unless you have like a serious wholesale account, like, actually, I don't know, maybe maybe Sam Cohen gets you all hooked up, but I don't, it's still pretty much been uh, grandfathered in. And you might be able to, if you can show proof of a huge, of a huge source of the products from directly from the supplier, you might be able to get yourself in, but that's not common. Uh, a lot of people got grandfathered in because they got in on the initial pandemic of Frozen. Um, and they started selling Frellos all before it was a, a huge thing. But, uh, you know, just try to find the next one. If, if, if you know, Frozen's going to go away eventually. But, uh, you know, the Minions is out now. What else is out? Star Wars is coming. Star Wars. Yeah, there's this thing, you know, just kind of just make sure you're thinking on that. And, and, you know, we've got back to school coming up. Maybe start thinking about bundles uh well i guess it might even be it's probably not, too late for for uh, yeah, i was gonna say it's probably too late for that but you know just just, just keep that in mind yeah halloween you know keep keep that stuff in mind also if you want you know if you're doing a private label product um or you want to do something with the listing studio that's something that we could help with as far as you know targeting things towards seasons or or you know father's day mother's day you know we we are sales people we need to capitalize on the situations it, it's the market is in flux and we need to capitalize on the certain uh, circumstances so if we can sell more because we're going back to school then we need to sell more because we're going back to school it's not always q4 it's not always q2 you got to play the market for what it's like but i'm getting off you didn't bring me here to talk about that i don't know well, anything except for ungating rashid asks um do you need to have the products in hand before you apply to get ungated in any category no 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 um they just need to be a legitimate product they all right the images that you'll get most of the images the supplier is going to have better images than you're going to be able to take most of the time so if it's a if it's a brand uh, a big name brand and you just use the supplier's picture you make sure the background is all white it fits the dimensions it's you know, a thousand and one or whatever the category is uh, pixel uh, width you'll be fine don't worry about they're not going to come to your house and, and ask you to hand over the product um, I don't it doesn't really say any way that you actually have to have it either so it's not I don't think it's against any terms of service you're fine um, they just want to see that you know that you're not going to send them like you know I don't know what you could sell in clothing that wouldn't yeah I mean you know Lena makes a good point you need the receipts right so you need to have bought the product so you have the receipt or the invoice okay and um and submit that through to request to be ungated but um you know talking, you don't still have to have the product you don't you don't even really need to intend to sell that particular product you know you're just using these particular products to you know listen we ate a lot of pop tarts the month that i bought those 10 boxes of pop tarts because they weren't um they weren't sellable for a profit so i'm not going to ship them into Amazon just for the fun of it, just so I could lose more money, right? So, the you know the point is is that you know we did buy the product, we did have the receipts, um, and we submitted the receipts or the invoices uh, uh, directly to Amazon, um, and there was no like we were completely honest with all of that, and that was all legit. For but the uh, one for the ones that require invoices, yeah, definitely. Sorry, but like the clothing and shoes, they don't require invoices. Are you, right. is that what, yeah, I mean, I don't, unless I'm, unless, 
They want you to they want you to prove you can either buy enough product in the three categories: beauty, health, and grocery. That you're buying wholesale volume to be able to sell in those categories. The categories where they want a flat file or pictures, they want you to prove that you can create those pictures and you know how to upload flat files and you can do uh, what they want you to do and follow their directions. Um, and that's all they're looking for. They're not looking for your products. They don't want to pre-approve your products. They want you to prove um, that you can list the products correctly. Uh, that's all it's about. If you use some, uh, some brands to get approved in clothing, uh, you don't have to only sell the, those brands and you don't ever have to sell those brands. Uh, they only want you know, your proof uh, of your, um, your knowledge and ability as a seller. That's one thing I can see changing too is they might, like I was saying about getting approved before it gets more difficult, that could be something that get more difficult is them requiring invoices for all categories, which makes sense. I mean, if they're going to ask for invoices for grocery, I mean, I, I don't want them to because that's not going to be fun for anybody, but it makes perfect sense that they would do that if that's how they feel, you know. They're going to, I, I see the whole ungating process getting revamped. I mean, we had that, that fluke when everybody was getting approved just by clicking request approval. Is that still happening? Anybody knows about? I don't basically, know. Maybe I'm sorry, you cut out. Um. Basically, basically, there was, uh, Brandon probably knows, for, uh, for like a month or so, there was just, people were just clicking uh, request approval, and they were getting approved in shoes, clothing, all types of stuff without any type of flat file. Yeah, that's not um, happening anymore. That, I think that only happened for maybe a week. Yeah, it was like 50-50 too, but it right. was... Uh, but you know, and and to me, I think that that was, I think that that was a mistake, and and Amazon told us and that that was a mistake. But I do think that there are probably in the process of changing some things up with the ungating process that might make it easier, harder. I don't know. I I would imagine harder, but um, just some things, just some things to keep in mind. Well, I mean, that's why you don't want to put it off, right? Don't right. don't put off getting ungated. Just get get in there, get ungated in as many categories as you can, and then you know, send in half a dozen products. Right, because they're not going to kick all of the clothing sellers out and then have to do all those approvals again that they dreaded doing in the first place. Right, right. I mean, you know, they want us to sell stuff. Right, yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's you know, they want us to sell. Uh, okay, so um, real quick, we're coming up on an hour here, Sean. Um, I saw Jason had a really interesting question. It's sort of to the, to the left of the conversation here, but um, he asks, why do people have multiple accounts? Um. Well, personally, for, for me, um, I had a partner I was going to take on um, to do something completely different, and I explained that to Amazon, and my metrics were uh, so stellar that they, they allowed it. Um, you know, um, the, the, the best, um, I think the best excuse now is to get approved in sexual wellness and tell them you do not want... Um, people go into your store um, to buy baby products and see sexual wellness products. And, um, you know, as long as your metrics are good and uh, you're following all the rules and you haven't been suspended, you'll, uh, you'll probably get approved for that reason uh, because they don't want that to happen, even though nobody really ever goes to your storefront. Um, you know, as far as why would you would need one, um, you know, unless you have a good reason, then uh, you might not need one. Um, if, you're, if your uh, stores are linked, if your accounts are linked, then if one gets suspended, the other one's going to get suspended. Uh, if not immediately, you know, eventually. So having two accounts that are linked together um, is not helping you if you get suspended. Right. It's going to close all the, everything linked to you is going to get closed down. Um, so, Definitely try to, try to con contact Amazon before I, I talked to somebody they have four accounts right now and none of them have been approved by like Amazon doesn't know about it and I was like oh my god you got to shut it all down oh, that's I was really like you bad. I was like you can't you can't do that um but you know I he told me a situation I was like they would have let you have them he had a really you know at, for tax purposes what he had going on would have would have been okay but now at this point I didn't know if I should tell him to uh you know, to, to come up and be like, look, this is what we did or 
you know, at that point, you're, you're behind the eight ball because you've already broken the terms of service. So instead of asking them, you're ask, asking them for approval, you're asking them for forgiveness. And that's, that's not the, the way you want to go about it. But like Sean said, uh, if you ask the, the sexual wellness is one thing. I mean, don't, you don't need to mess with it. You really don't need two accounts unless you've got some, like Sean has the circumstances. If you don't know already why you need a second account, don't worry about it. Um, when you need it, you'll think about it. But like, it's already hard enough to manage one, the metrics of one. It's not that one's going to get suspended. You're going to be able to go jump on the other. It's not gonna, that's not going to save you. Um, so just be smart with that. Don't ever open up a second seller account without approval. Um, even if it's legitimate, it doesn't matter as long as, as Amazon's got to approve it. Even though they'll, they'll suspend a legitimate account, you know, just because. Yeah. Uh, um, I think Karen has a, a follow up to that. Um, another example, um, uh, like I said, what I used was that, um, you know, I had a business partner and I did not want, um, I need to keep that separate. So if I have all the money from one account, it, it, it would be very hard to uh, differentiate every item that I was sharing with a business partner. And um, uh, I basically said that I bought a business with a business partner and wanted to start selling on Amazon a second account. It would be at the same location and um, there was no good way to uh, keep that separate. Um, you know, another thing I think that would work I think everybody's going to jump on this. Not that it's, not that there's enough people in this group to even make a dent in the Amazon selling community in general. But you could also be like, I have coffee products. Maybe that does make sense. Like we do build websites for for people. Okay, I don't, but I've got people on my team that do. Um, and sometimes they want to build a website, but it's so it's it's like going to a garage sale. You would never return to somebody's site that just has a hodgepodge of stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Even if it's good stuff, unless the prices are amazing on everything, you're not going to come back. You, no one's going to remember your A store. But there are like, if you sell like supplements or or coffee or stuff that people come back to over and over, it might be in your best interest to actually have a second account where you only sell your coffee or whatever it is, and then that way you can also create a, an offline or not an offline, an off Amazon website where you sell that niche specific item. And that would be a way for you if, if some of you don't want to get a proven sexual wellness just for whatever, you know, moral reasons or anything else. A lot of people don't or they just don't. They know they're never going to sell it, so they don't even. If that's another – that could be another good reason to open a second account. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're exactly right. Um, I, you know, I've got people that I've consulted with, and they have um, – that's the exact reason that they've, they've used. You know, they've got a brand, and that brand is very focused. It's a niche, it's a niche brand. And um, they've submitted to Amazon, hey, look, you know, we're, we're selling supplements through this brand or we're selling, I don't know, we're selling vacuum cleaner connections or we're so selling air filters or whatever it is that you're selling, right? And we don't want to sell Star Wars toys on that same, on that same account. So, right. um, because we want that brand to be pure and be, you know, all by itself. And you know right. what, they, they, in my experience, they've always approved for that reason, you know. So. Yeah, I've never heard of a legit reason like that being, you know, it just just approaching and being like, I want two stores. I mean, it, there's really there's no need for that anyway. I mean, I don't know why you'd want. Unless yeah, you I mean, you know, the other thing too, guys, you got to remember, uh, just like Nate said, um, it's probably more of a headache than it is a relief. You know, you're going to be managing. I mean, I guess we've given you pointers on how to set up a second or even a third account, but. I, I mean, I, you got tax star. You set it up twice. Golly. Yeah. And, and, and you, you know, like if you use inventory lab or scan power or whatever, you've got all those expenses over again. And, you know, logging in and out three times, yeah. Canada and two American accounts. So, all, <laughs> you know, a few repricers. Yeah. So a few <laughs> repricers will allow, um, you know, a few repricers will allow you to have multiple marketplaces. So um, I'm using AppEagle right now. I might be changing it to some other options. But with AppEagle, I can have multiple um, things going. So I have all my Amazon accounts uh, in there and some other accounts that I do. Um, you know, but you really don't want to pay for all that extra add-on software uh, multiple times. And, it, you know, it really is a headache to – uh, to deal with. So yeah, it's, it's more fun to talk about than to actually do. 
You know, I mean, you know, if you're bored and, you know, you want to see if you can do it, I mean, it might be a good idea, but, um, you know, it's a bigger headache than it's really worth unless you have a really good reason. Um, you know, maybe if you're launching a private label product, that's a good reason. Uh, so you don't have anything else on there and you can advertise that, um, you know, on other, other platforms. Um, go open, go open an account on Jet and tell me about it. Right. Is anybody selling on that yet? I don't want to get off topic, but not not selling yet. But I opened my account the other day. Really? So we'll see. I'm pumped um, for that. Okay, so, so we're we're uh, we're about six minutes over the hour, Sean. So um, however you want to wrap it up with Nate there, and yeah, um, why don't you tell us how to go to um, all your many sites and um, group and sign up for your uh, whatever you're selling? All right. If, if you're in my Facebook group already, it's FBA Today. My ungating business is now ungateyouraccount.com. We used to be FBA today, so if you send anybody over, send them to ungateyouraccount.com. Uh, the listingstudio.com is where we do our listings. Um, if you need help with reinstatements, we are doing reinstatements. I do those personally. Um, I kind of take those only by request. There's You can't find that online anywhere. Um, what, was, uh, what was the, the ungating site again? Ungate your account. Dot com. Okay. And um, the listing studio is our listing site. Yep. And if you really think I'm that much fun, you can come to 21dip.com and take my 21 day info product course that is launching in 16 days. Totally off topic, but it's a it's a passion of mine, and I'm having fun with the course. So. Yeah, if you want to write your own book or ebook or anything like that, that's um, that's really the way to go. I don't sleep, so if you've ever got any questions, you feel free to email me, and I'll. And if you're a member of, um, uh, I mean, the only people who should ever see this video is the people that are members of um, of my mastermind groups. But if you go in the group, uh, there's a 25% off discount. Um, it's posted there. It's all over the place. Um, or just uh, send a message to one of us. Yeah, Mayo Mayo twenty five. We'll get you twenty five percent off. There you go. All right, and, and over in the chat, I put the uh, I put the the listingstudio dot com and ungetyouraccount dot com. If you guys want to take note of that and copy and paste it out of the chat, because once we leave the meeting, the chat will go away. <laughs> so that's it. Anything else? No, I think that uh, Sherry the. Discount is only for the ungating service. Yeah, if you're, if you're interested in the uh, 21 DIP, uh, you can PM me as well. and We can talk about that. I do want to, I kind of like to talk to people about their topics before we, uh, before they join. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Other than that, it was great uh, coming on here, Sean. I appreciate you letting me uh, run my mouth here for an hour, eight minutes. Thanks for sharing.